Welcome, my name is Rod Horrocks, I'm the GFIRST LEP's project manager for the Hub Mentors program. And this is an introduction to the second in our series of webinars called Moving Online. The subject for this webinar is video conferencing. And as many of you will know, this has taken off during the pandemic through the likes of uh, Microsoft Teams, Skype, and latterly Zoom. There are a number of issues with using some of these tools, particularly how you can use them, how well you can use them, and how you apply them to any new strand of business that you might think of. We've got three great talkers this morning. First of these is Kirsty Elson, who is the owner of Infinite Balance, a Pilates studio, and she has taken all her Pilates work, relaxation exercises and proper uh, core training exercises online. And she speaks really highly of how that has worked well with her for Zoom. Second of our speakers is our own Elizabeth Weaver, who manages the business uh, industry groups, um, and she has taken video conferencing online to keep those going. And again, she'll talk about how actually that has been very effective in making those meetings more efficient. And finally, David Woodfine, um, a partner of the Growth Hubs, who runs a company called Cyber Security Associates. And David will talk about the cyber issues and the security issues of using these tools and how to make sure that you stay safe with your own data and your customers' data during uh, any use of these tools. And we'll address some of the issues that we have seen uh, through tools like Zoom. Please enjoy. Okay, so Next. hopefully everyone can see my screen here. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so um, before um, everything happened, um, I had, uh, well, I do still have, I've got a, a studio, personal training studio, and I train um, train people uh, Monday to Friday in the evenings. And I was saying to um, some of the other um, experts before, the Sunday before it all happened, I had run a charity session. My business was probably the best it had ever been. I was um, really happy, but I had this weird feeling of something was going to go wrong, oh, and, and, it, and it did. <laughs> So um, it was probably uh, the week after on the, on the Monday night, we were then told that uh, we couldn't run sessions. So um, I run a fitness studio, members come into pro close proximity all the time. Um, we're all touching kits, we chat, we laugh, uh, we sweat. Um, so it wasn't good. Um, I've got an age range of people from 25 years old to 73. I have people with extreme asthma, um, lots of different conditions, and I knew I had to make a change. Um, so this was um, on, the, on the first Monday, the, the night before the over 70s were told that they couldn't actually go out. Um, so I, uh, I'm going to come on to the next one, actually. Um, so I knew straight away I had to make a change and go on Zoom. I'd only heard of Zoom, like from my friends in business. <laughs> I had no idea what it was. So um, that night um, on the Monday, I think I stayed up probably most of the night and I Googled and I searched and I practiced on Zoom as much as I can. And the next morning I launched Zoom and I messaged um, my lovely client Pam, who's 72, who was sad because she couldn't come to my session. She comes every week on a Tuesday morning for years. And I messaged her and said, Pam, I've got this thing called Zoom. <laughs> I have no idea really how, how to use it, but here you go, here's a link, you click on that link, hopefully it works, and it worked. And Pam came to my session, and we had that session on the Tuesday, the first Tuesday, which I'm really proud of. Um, and um, after the session, was, uh, Pam, you know, is quite, you know, keeps herself to the point, and she sent me a message afterwards. She said, Kirsty, I cried. I was so grateful that you enabled me to use Zoom. So, I've been using Zoom ever since for every session and I have learned quite quickly. Sometimes um, it does feel a bit weird. When I first started, I felt like I was talking to a computer, but now I realise that it's, it's a privilege. Um, and there's not just Zoom, it's Microsoft Teams. And it's a privilege for me to be in someone else's house with them, helping them to exercise. Um, when I did start, I was really nervous. I missed the face-to-face. -face. I would finish a session and sometimes I would 
cry because <laughs> I just miss seeing everyone so much. My heart was like broken. My business, I thought it was gone. But actually, as we did it more, I realized you can still interact through Zoom. And I knew I had to adapt and evolve to grow. So one of my friends sent me three words um, when it first happened. He just said, cursed, adapt, evolve, grow. And every day I think of those three words. So I embrace Zoom and I've not looped back. Um, if you haven't used Zoom yet or you're starting out, you feel nervous, my biggest advice would be just go for it, embrace it, get involved. Um, I use it in a different way than other people might use it, but ultimately it's communicating with people digitally, but we're still here, we're still talking to each other. So um, I've learned quite a lot. Um, the way I invite people to my Zoom sessions is controlled. It's the way that they book into my sessions, usually in a piece of software. So I try to keep my safety that way. So only the people that book in for the session can have the Zoom schedule. Um, to keep it easy, I send those invites 24 hours before their session so they can see it. And then when I start the session 15 minutes before I send the email again, because you know what it's like in your inbox, <laughs> it's just full and you're trolling through and they're Googling Kirsty infinite balance and sometimes you can't find it. So I always send it just before the session. For some people, um, they don't have email on their iPad or the iPhone and I have a list of those people that need to have the meeting link texted to them. So they don't have to remind me, I have it by my little Zoom station of who I need to adapt the um, link to. So 15 minutes before every session, the meeting starts. Um, I have uh, my video and sound muted. I learned that the sound isn't automatically muted. <laughs> my husband was in there making tea with the kids and uh, everyone could hear. Um, and then just before the session, I log in like you just have now and I put on my video and I chat to people and I make conversation and I've learned that I can now engage with people's emotions and how they are feeling through Zoom. Who would have thought it? But you can. Um, everyone is on gallery when they first come on. I know the people that don't want to be in gallery. I know the people that don't want their videos on and that's fine. I just reach over it and we're fine. But most people now come and say hello. And then I'm like, I'm going to mute you now. And I mute everyone, but I keep talking, a bit like I am now. <laughs> so I keep talking and talking and talking throughout the session. Um, and I make them feel at ease. And I talk to them as if they're in the room with me. Um, I used to, when I, I used to, when I first started, I felt like I was talking to a computer, but I don't now. I feel like I'm talking to everyone, like I'm talking to you now. I don't share with them my misconceptions or how I feel about Zoom, I don't tell them that I may be worried. Um, I just show confidence and embrace it. And again, I just feel as if I'm talking to them. Um, so why does Zoom work for me? It doesn't need to be Zoom teleconferencing. It can be anything that you're choosing to do. Um, the members have a private link to log into the session. For those who can't come to the sessions, I record every session. So for my insurance, I need to record. And I share the session, but only with those members that attend the session. And I do it through a Dropbox transfer, so it only lasts for six days. Otherwise, they would just record the sessions and stop coming. Um, I do coaching sessions for well-being as well. And it's great because I can screen share like I have now. Um, I've now started using YouTube. So I've got loads of dodgy videos of me prancing around on YouTube, which is brilliant. So I might have a stretching sequence and I have that up on the screen and I can coach people through it. So my whole business has changed. My whole business um, has, has grown because of this. Um, in Spotlight My Videos, you can see clients can be muted, sessions can be recorded, et cetera, et cetera. But um, if my, my business has changed. So I've gone to working frantically loads of hours, um, loads of you know, sessions, but those sessions could never be recorded, whereas now I can record my session. So if someone came to a hit session, for example, on the Monday and they really enjoyed it and they wanted to do that again on the Wednesday at 7 a.m., they can do because it's recorded. In addition to this, I then had the confidence to set up an online program. So I've got into a piece of software, which is a recognized PT software for personal trainers. 
and I've uploaded videos of myself doing exercises and I now have an online program which my clients are buying into and I have new clients buying into. So my income um, when I go back to usual could potentially double or I could potentially ease back a little bit and have evenings back to myself a bit more. But that's a decision that um, through this crisis, uh, those three words, evolve, adapt and grow, have meant that I've embraced Zoom, I've started an online program, um, I have got new clients in my sessions, I can have uh, 20 people, I have a stretch and relax session uh, once a month, I usually have six people because that's the ma at maximum I can fit in my studio. I had over 20 this Sunday and I've already had 50 downloads of the recorded sessions. Um, what I was saying to Rod earlier was that maybe the mistake or maybe the mistake I didn't make was I hacked my membership. So I hacked the cost of people seeing me. But I've got more people coming to the sessions and I've met my financial target every month because I've worked hard and I've worked out how to do it from the beginning of the month. So, yeah, it's, um, I feel really proud to be here, sitting here, sharing the story. I haven't probably stopped working for the past few weeks and I'm thinking if everything went, suddenly went back to normal next week, I might think I should have had a break, but I've loved every moment of it, but it hasn't all been easy. And I've had to have, you know, lots of support. The Growth Hub has been a massive support to me. Um, I've had quite a few sessions with them as well so that's me really but if i could help anyone to be a bit more confident to use zoom or go online if anyone if you speak to any of my clients i'll tell you how much i hated taking videos of myself and i did not like putting my face in social media or pictures of me doing exercises because i was scared of the haters um scared of people criticizing and now i've realized that actually it's different you don't have to have the polished polished finished effect you just need to get out there and do it so, yeah. Okay. Kirsty, thank um, you very much. Where's my <laughs> Mom, where's the iPad? <laughs> no, 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 absolutely brilliant. Kirsty, thank you very much. We'll wait and see what questions we get. Um, so if you want to mute yourself and I'll ask Elizabeth, can you pick up from there? There we go. First lesson, make sure you're not muted. I was just saying thank you to you, Kirsty. Um, for that, that was really inspiring. So um, thanks very much for that. Um, just a very um, short introduction as to, to how um, GFS Lep have adapted. I look after the business groups, um, and the main um, reason behind the business groups is to um, disseminate the voice of business up to government, um, and then disseminate those government messages back down to businesses as well. And for us, um, after lockdown, we're all we're all working from home. Those business groups would happen uh, physically, pretty much physically, um, about four or five times a year. And there's 10 business groups covering the industries that are uh, most prominent in the county. So anything from cyber to advanced engineering to agri, food and rural, right through to banking and finance. So um, it was now imperative, it, even more so than ever, that we kept these meetings going and we kept the communication going. Um, and like I said, it's a very much a two way street of information from businesses up to government and vice versa. So for us and for me, it was a no brainer. We had to keep these going um, and we had to put them online. And I think I can count the number of times on one hand that I've used um, a, a video conferencing system, whether it's Teams, whether it's Zoom, whether it's some other sort of platform. So it was a steep learning curve for, for me and for all of us um, and certainly for the business group chairs. Um, but what I, I mean, what I can say to, to all you guys is very much jump in with both feet. There's nothing to be scared of. It will keep the continuity going um, and it'll keep that communication going with your business. Um, and it very much keeps the communication going between our business group members. Now, each of our business groups has a business group chair, which leads the group. Um, so it was really important for me to get in touch with them and to agree a, a platform uh, and to stick to it. So we decided to go with Zoom for all but um, one of our business groups who decided to meet on Teams because they're already on Teams and it's just the way that it works better for them. Um, keep the transition as smooth as possible. That's what we try to do to keep the transition as smooth as possible for our members and, and for yourself really and for, for your own sanity. 
Um, so we sent out the, um, the, the web links um, with a diary invite, which had already gone out. So it was just a case of creating the Zoom meeting, sending, resending that out. Um, and we sent that out with a very simple how-to guide on how to use Zoom. Um, Inyaki put a, a really nice um, visual representation um, together for us that we could send out with the, with the diary note. So just to, it would take people five minutes just to have a read through um, and understand how it, how it all works. And literally it's just clicking on the link and Zoom will start and it will download if it's not already downloaded. And um, if they've got any problems with videos and things like that, then it gives them the opportunity to to, to try and you know, get that sorted and get that fixed. And I was very much available, as were the chairs, to, to help out as much as we could. We decided to reduce the meetings down to an hour. Uh, they used to be two hours. Uh, we decided, let's, let's, make, them, let's make them an hour. Um, the, the context of the meetings for us was very much, um, how has COVID impacted your business? So it was a, a round table five minutes for each person around the table, bearing in mind the business groups vary in size from 12 people right the way through to about 24, 25. It was imperative at this point in time that we gathered that information uh, and sent it up to government in the form of uh, weekly bulletins and daily meetings with um, the, um, the bays and other government departments um, so they could see what was happening day to day. So one hour, two or three minutes per person, how has it impacted? And now we're looking towards um, resilience and things like that. So the content of the meetings had changed slightly as well. Um, so there was obviously going to be initial hiccups. Um, I think, like I said before, it's very important that you make yourself available. Um, have, a, have a practice meeting with, with the people that you're going to have a meeting with. Maybe it's just the chair. Um, set up a test meeting. Um, do some trials on sharing your screens. Um, what does this button do? Oh, God, everything's gone blank. It's much better to practice and do that um, you know, on a one-to-one -one basis and so you can understand it. Uh, or if you're extremely um, conscientious like Kirsty, you can stay up all night and, uh, and learn uh, the ins and outs of Zoom, whichever works for you really. Um, but I think continue, from my perspective, it was really, really important for me and continues to be to exude uh, continuity and offer support as well. And ensuring our business group members know how to use and install the software. Uh, and then there's nothing scary about it really. So I would say know the basics of your platform. Um, I didn't, I'd use Zoom maybe once, maybe twice. So I had to not only know the basics, but come across like I knew what I was doing and be confident in, in, in explaining to people the basics and how to use it. Um, get it to work for you, get it to work for your meeting, adapt your meeting if you need to, adapt your face-to-faces your, your -face if you need to. Um, and, and a few tips and tricks that I've learned, which I'm sure you're probably aware of if you've used it already, which helped me out, which I'll share with you. Um, there's an option to mute everyone on entry. Um, this is really useful if you've got sort of more than 10 people involved in your meeting. Um, it's really great because there's so much background noise that you're probably not aware of. Um, it's quite useful if you can just select mute on entry. Um, just, don't, just don't say to everyone, how is everybody? Because then you'll get a sea of un noises and things but um, if you just tell everyone that that's what you've done and then what we found was quite useful was having a um, an intro and then a round table so you introduce the person and say right and then we have a, a sort of around a round table um, intro like that um, paste the agenda into the chat column the chat column is really useful for having um, pasting web links um, sending out questions or, or asking anything either to everyone or on a one-to-one -one on a private um, uh, private chat mode. It's the equivalent of just sort of nudging someone next to you and just asking about things or asking a question to the room. Um, and uh, yeah, we paste the agenda into there as well. So everyone knows what we're going to be talking about and how it's going to be running. Um, and um, yeah, like I said, roundtable introduction, especially if got no one's got, uh, if someone's got no name displayed, um, quite often um, someone doesn't know how to sort of put their name in or if they've got no video working for broadband uh, uh, bandwidth issues or if they've, um, they're calling in via phone. Obviously with Zoom, you get a selection of phone numbers that you can use. Some people can't use Zoom due to firewalls and things, which I'm sure that um, Dave might go through in, in a mo. Um, some local authorities that have, have higher, higher firewalls than others and some won't, 
use Zoom, so have to phone in and just be aware of that and just understand that that may well happen, not the end of the world, because like Kirsty said, you can record Zoom meetings and then you can send the web link via a, a platform for everyone to, um, to review later on. Really useful if you need to take notes um, instead of everyone just sort of looking at your head when you're writing notes like this, it's great. You can just hit record and you can do it in your own time. Um, have a pre-meet with the chair, like I said, just to test it's all working. Meet up with the meeting maybe five or ten minutes before it actually starts, so you're happy and you know how everything's going to be working. Um, and then you can let people in before the meeting starts, or you can have them waiting and then let them in when you're ready. Um, and then don't be afraid to set out some housekeeping rules at the start of the meeting, really. Um, like I said, if you just ask yourself to go on mute when you're not speaking, to reduce the background noise, um, and like I said, use the chat column for questions and comments uh, and web links as well and other documents that you might be t uh, using um, and sharing, screen sharing is really useful as well. Um, and the plan really moving forward for us is this is very much going to be part of our business groups moving forward. Um, it will probably be when we get back to or forward to some sort of form of normal, it'll when we're meeting up physically, um, the virtual world will still be very much um, hand in hand with that. Um, so we're still going to going to obviously keep in touch throughout all of this, whether it's through meetings or just 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 reaching out and keeping in touch with people, I think is really important. Um, and um, we will have a mixture, I think, of virtual and physical meetings moving forward. And I think um, my three words, Kirsty, going in your sort of same vein would be um, adaptation, continuity and support. I think we need to have that element of continuity going forward to give people that confidence that we're all in it together and yes you know we're moving forward um, and we've got some take homes um, from from this situation that we're in and just continue to offer that level of support um, that's what we're here for that's what the leper here for is one of our, our our main aims so that's that's my job really to to offer that level of support absolutely thank you yes so um, let's see if everyone can hear me Yes. <laughs> thank you. Um, well, I'll just say two very hard acts to follow. So thank you very much to Kirsty and Elizabeth. Fantastic. Um, so I'm Dave Woodfine. I'm the uh, Director of Cybersecurity Associates, but also the uh, Chairperson of uh, one of the G First groups, the Cyber Group, uh, which Elizabeth alluded to. We were one of the first to go for the Zoom meeting. And um, without a shadow of doubt, I thought it was a fantastic success. It was one of my first ones uh, using this brave new world. Now, the aim is I'm not going to try and scare everybody too much because most of the platforms we work on are very secure. What is not so secure is the people that are using these platforms and the processes which we follow in order to use these platforms. Uh, you've got to remember that we've moved to this new style of uh, flexible remote working overnight. Uh, whilst we're in the work environment, we get lots of training. Uh, and all of a sudden, we're being asked to work remotely without any training at all, and we're going to learn as we go along. So I do have a number of slides, so I'm going to share my screen. Just check. Okay. All right, just confirm. Can you see my screen? Yes, clearly. Fantastic. So, so the, the first slide I'm going to bring up, um, this is a slide that came out last month, as you can see, just over a month ago. This was a fantastic... Um, uh, alert that was produced by the UK and the Americans together and the bit I've highlighted really just goes to show that cyber criminals really have started rubbing their hands together. They realised that the whole COVID-19 was a fantastic opportunity to uh, increase their attack vectors. So what does that mean? So it meant that they were going to increase their number of scams but they evolved. So they decided and we've seen over the last few weeks that uh, the amount of people remote working rather than sending out COVID-19 related scams and phishing emails. They're going to send out fake um, video conferencing invites and emails. Um, the overall intent is still the same, and that is to have some sort of interaction by ourselves, providing them with the information they need. So these are some of the key themes and points which I've seen uh, over the last few weeks. Now, without doubt, COVID-19 is now perhaps the biggest topic theme used by some cyber criminals to launch attacks. So the days of um, winning the South African lottery or you've inherited a fortune from a Nigerian prince are over. COVID-19 is now the biggest topic theme out there. And it's working for them. 
now they're using emails, they're using text messages, and they're using uh, phone messaging direct as well. Just launch mechanisms. So just remember that when we hear all these terms, they're just a way for us to interact with them in some way. I think the next thing which I've seen is that remote workers were isolated. We're isolated from our normal working environment. Although we do have these platforms and the way we communicate is fantastic. Um, but we're also isolated from our internal security controls and best practices. When at work, we have the comfort to know that we have our, our, our team in place, our process in place, and can talk to our line managers, our colleagues if we're worried about something. Working remotely, uh, it becomes a lot harder. Also notice that uh, policies and processes are always written for that workplace environment. They have not been adapted and mended to deal with the complexities of remote working and using uh, video conferencing. So some which we do need to think about as an organisation is that our, all of a sudden uh, uh, our policies will have to change. Now, if you remember that not every company can afford to give everyone a corporate laptop, give them access to the internet, pay for their broadband, pay for their router, we're relying on our own IT and our infrastructure to support remote working. So this had carries its own dangers. And more recently, as I mentioned at the start, now we're going to see video conferencing hijacking. So there's people bombing or hijacking into, into conferences uh, because the security controls may not have been uh, uh, shared um, uh, securely. For example, Kirsty, she shares her, her links very securely. A lot of people don't do that because they don't know how to do it. And more importantly, data leakage. I just saw a report yesterday. I think there was literally like 500,000 uh, recorded um, uh, Zoom uh, meetings were uploaded to the cloud uh, and were all leaked. So we've got to realize, think about this, is that data leakage is a key thing, especially in the days of GDPR. And I'll talk a little bit more about that shortly, is uh, what are we recording and what would happen if that was leaked? So what does the attacker want? So basically the attacker wants your credentials. By well, whatever means possible, he wants your username, password, bank account details, your credentials, that's what he's after. If he has username and password, he can get into the network, your computer. Uh, he wants access to your computer. The way I do that is through trying to download ransomware, use your computer as a wider botnet. So this is like a, a robot a network of computers he's going to use, and yours may be one of those. You might want to download something called a keylogger, which is a, it's a piece of software that can capture your keystrokes so you can see what you're typing in username and password. But just simply to try and take control uh, and allow access to others. So he wants to just get control of the computer. And finally, he wants your data, he wants personal data, sensitive data, and commercial and financial data. All of these could be available via video conferencing. So just to give you an idea, so this is a Zoom phishing email. We created this, so CSA, we created this ourselves. And as you can see, it is a direct replica of what you would expect to see through a calendar invite. This is not real, I hasten to add. This is a fake calendar invite. Uh, so firstly, we're asking to click, join the Zoom meeting by clicking that link. So if you click that link, uh, immediately that could give uh, access to the cyber criminal. He could download some software. But what he's trying to do on this occasion is by clicking that link, he's going to take it to the Zoom portal. Looks legitimate, but again, this is a uh, direct copy of the Zoom login pages. Okay, so as soon as you type in your meeting ID or your personal name and your password, hit join, we've got it. And this is what we captured. So we just put in uh, the meeting ID there. Um, uh, and we didn't put the password in really because we don't we don't normally capture passwords. But this is how easy it is. Now a lot of people who are not familiar with Zoom um, would probably quite happily put in their username and password. We've done exactly the same for Teams. Uh, it's very easy to do. So what is the big thing I have to learn from this? Well, nine times out of ten, probably more like nine times out of hundred, the Zoom links you're, you're getting, you're expecting to receive them. So you have to think. Mm. I'm expecting to get this. And more importantly, if it's asking me to enter my username and password, that doesn't normally happen because normally it should automatically log me in because your details have been uh, saved locally and it should uh, put you in. If in doubt, you go to your uh, online account and uh, check or enter in that way. So moving on. 
So here's some of the do's and don'ts. So I'll quickly go through this, but I don't want to, uh, I, could, I could talk for hours if it's required, but with only a couple of minutes left, we'll just go through a couple of bits. So use recognized confidence software. So Zoom, Teams are good ways of communicating. Whereas FaceTime, WhatsApp are probably better for uh, more on the social side of the house. Um, so always think about those recognized software because Zoom overnight had to improve its security controls and it has done so very well. Always think about, should I be on this meeting? Uh, why have I got this invite? Um, is it random? Or am I expecting it? Think about that business versus social discussion. We all like to talk about what we've been doing throughout the day, but there's often things which um, uh, we don't want to mix business uh, with pleasure. So think about GDPR and what you're discussing uh, when it comes to data privacy and data security. I think as, uh, as Elizabeth alluded to, you, the, making use of the waiting room feature is fantastic because you control who can come in to the meeting. And uh, now making use of those password protection for meetings so you can't randomly, uh, if, you're li if the link for the meeting is out there, if it's password protected, people can't get in and bomb the meeting as I was referred to. Sharing links is, is a big no-no. Uh, and then more on a couple other things is uh, be, be, beware of your background. What is in your background? What is behind you when, it, when you're on your Zoom meeting? Are you in that um, uh, downstairs in the kitchen? Uh, I, uh, who, who can listen into those meetings? Uh, one of the ones which came out to me was, uh, are you in the same room as, as Alexa? Is your Alexa device in the same meeting uh, room as uh, you're having your meeting? Because Alexa is always on, unless you've turned off uh, the voice activation. Uh, it could be listening. So you could uh, maybe transmitting all your information straight into the cloud and Amazon got it. Uh, recording meetings are fine, but I say only do it in, in, if you really need to and always check where it will be stored. Uh, just think about uh, those compromises in the cloud. Uh, and then as, as I said, make sure the host is trained, uh, making sure confidence is secure in your meeting, and letting people in, letting them put in booting people out, sharing screens, muting, etc. So there's a few things there. Uh, and finally, cybersecurity about now is more in focus with remote working and video conferencing, but the more focus is on the individual. It's up to us to make sure that uh, we are aware, we're trained. Uh, we need to make sure we have the right processes in place. So we need, they have to be adapted to follow those do's and don'ts, which I've alluded to. Uh, and put it beyond and train against the cyber threat. It's as simple as that. The cyber criminal is taking advantage. Uh, and I always say, we're not the weakest link. We are that strongest link, the first line of defense. So yeah, we're just going to be more aware uh, when it comes to using uh, video conferencing and remote working. And that's me done. So thank you very much. Uh, excellent uh, for such a difficult subject. I thought you handled it really well. So thank you for that. It's really good.